Okay, so I'll do a couple of these. For this question, we're given a radical function and we're asked to find the domain horizontal intercept, vertical intercept. Um, for the example of, I think there's one of these and it's right, if you go to 4.1 and you look in the header, there's already an extra video up for this. You'll see another one here when you, this one will be there too. Um, but look at this one for those middle examples. Um, so let me get back there. Uh, so domain first. Okay, to find the domain of any rational function, um, what you're going to do is whatever the math is under the radical, you're going to take the math and it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, and that's because if you think about a square root, I can't take the square root of a negative number. That doesn't exist. It's imaginary. Uh, I, square root of zero is fine, square root of something positive is fine. So that's what we want to do, greater than or equal to zero to find the domain for any of the even roots. So here we'll go, x minus 11 is greater than or equal to zero, bring the 11 over, and x is greater than or equal to 11. Um, so the domain for this would be um, everything greater than or equal to 11, so we need a bracket. I think that's where you went wrong on yours when I checked the answer, I think you have a parenthesis. Um, but it's a bracket because we can, it's okay if x, if x is 11, 11 minus 11 will be 0, square root of 0 would be 0, and that's in the domain. And then that goes on out to infinity. To find the horizontal intercept, we let y equal 0 for the output, which is basically what I just did here. 0 equals x minus 11. We add that over, and we get x equals 11. So that means x is 11 when the output f of x, or I'll think of it as y in terms of ordered pairs, is 0. And then to find the vertical intercept for that, you want to let x equal 0. And if you try that, and I'll call that y just because we're finding an ordered pair, um, you see what happens is I get y equals the square root of negative 11. Um, this ends up being an imaginary solution. This is, this is not a real number, so it does not have a y-intercept. So that would be d and e is how you do that one. Same thing over here. Um, this has a few more steps to it and that sign I want to point out. The other examples um, have a number in front. It really doesn't do anything. Um, it doesn't change the domain. It doesn't change the x-intercept and the y, or the y-intercept because you divide that over and it, it just divides out. But you can see that in that one video that I showed. Um, so 17 minus 28 x greater than or equal to 0 for domain. We add the 17 over and I got negative 28x is greater than or equal to positive 17. And then here's where people mess it up. Um, let me change color. When you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, you have to remember to flip the direction of the inequality. So right there, I've divided both sides by negative 28. So instead of greater than that is now x is less than or equal to, oops, negative 17 28ths. Um, don't change that to a decimal, leave that just as it is. And then if x is less than that, then that's going um, this way. If it was a graph, it'd be like going that direction. So this would be negative infinity up to negative 17 28ths. And again, I can include the zero because it's okay to have a square root of zero, just not negatives. Um, so that would be the, the domain. Um, the x-intercept is going to be this exact same math. Um, so just like I did here, I would put this equal to zero, bring the 17 over and divide the 28. And then that would get me when the output was zero, um, the input would be negative 17 28ths. Um, so exactly the same as I did there. So negative 17 minus 28x equals 0. Solve that out, and you get this. Um, then for the other side, let's see, let me erase. Now I'll just leave it. Um, for the other side, oh, it's going to be the same thing, because if I put a 0 right here for this x to get the, um, the y-intercept, I end up with the square root of negative 17 again. So that doesn't work. Um, so that's a D and E. Um, if it had a y-intercept, let me go ahead and clear this and just show something that would have a y-intercept. Um, let's say I had the square root of uh, x plus 5, <laughs> something simple, equals y. So in that case, my x-intercept would be when y is 0, 
bringing that over, my x would be negative 5. And if I wanted to find the y-intercept on that, I would say y equals 0 plus 5. I let x equal 0, and then square root 5, and that would be a y-intercept for one that works. Cool. Hopefully that helps.